it is good to see all of you in the house of the lord and if i may make an early observation i notice that some of you have changed your regular spots and uh, i can see that because i looked at the usual spots and it was empty and then i look further down and there you are you've kind of uh, shall we say relocated uh, so all kinds of interesting dynamics today so i do want to welcome all of you and uh, we have some special guests pastor roger has already welcomed aurora and good to see aurora this is her first time in church and of course big brother caspian we want to welcome caspian and uh, as you know life without caspian in church has been boring because he and i work well together to keep uh, all of you awake and alert uh, we also want to welcome spencer and uh, spencer is uh, back today and uh, we want to welcome spencer as well some of you are wondering who spencer is but you'll get to see him after the service the last time i met spencer i was in a tie uh, all here for his uh, dedication service so i will remember spencer and uh, we want to welcome uh, jimmy jimmy's uh, helping us with the drums and good to have you join us today jimmy that's good <laughs> that was a round of applause we have melissa coming back after like i don't know how many years melissa but uh, good good to see god's people coming together in the house of the lord if you're here for the first time then uh, i would invite you to stay around for a little bit and chat with us and uh, there's also the guest book that we invite you and encourage you to sign now uh, if you listen to the reading and thank you anna for leading us in the reading of god's word if you listen to anna reading the word of god you will see the first reading talked about vessels and uh, the apostle paul is writing to timothy and uh, he is using the image of a large house in fact as you look at verse 20 he says in a large house the word there is mega which means very big and he's using the image and he says in a large house there are vessels all types of vessels vessels of gold and vessels of silver and vessels of wood and just ordinary vessels and uh, the apostle paul in his very skillful manner of writing and communicating he goes back and forth between this imagery and he wants to emphasize just one important point which is there in verse 21 where he says made holy useful to the master and prepared to do any good work so in this discussion he is trying to remind timothy that in all of this it's all about being fit for the master's work now some of us remember 10 commandments do you remember the movie 10 commandments and the question in your mind is which version are you referring to i'm going back to the old uh, uh, who is the man who produced it yes it was charlton heston and you know the whole lineup uh, yul briner and all that there is a point in the movie where moses is now sent off or rather charlton heston is sent off uh, into the wilderness and uh, you know yul briner says as ramesses he says here is your kingdom scorpions for your subject and you remember all those famous lines and moses walks and walks and walks and the desert winds and the sand and the the heat get the better of him and he collapses do you remember that scene some of you do some of you don't some of you need to go back and re-watch the movie i mean look at what a wonderful church we have the pastor encouraging you to go and watch movies so uh, in that scene moses collapses to the ground and then the line goes the vessel is finally fit for the master's use and i will always remember that line because that's so very true of moses it was true of moses and it is very true of all of us we try everything we can we use our talents we use our skills we try to engineer solutions we try to do all kinds of things until we realize that you know i need to surrender and let god 
And that is when God says, now you are ready for me to use you. The vessel that's fit for the master's use or an instrument that's fit for a master's use. Pastor Roger and I had a discussion about this message And uh, we talked about which versions to use and so on and so forth. And we have a few discussions every week, by the way, in case you uh, want to know what's going on. And uh, Pastor Roger made a very interesting observation that in some translations, they use the word instrument. And uh, this word that is used as vessel is translated most often as vessel or a container. But on one or two occasions, it is used as an instrument or an article in somebody's home. And that is why some of the versions have the word instrument, which is why if you watch and read the email that comes out or came out this Sunday, you will see in that slide that Pastor Roger has created, you have the word instrument. And that's where it comes from. But whether you use vessel, whether you use instrument, it's all the same. We are talking about being fit for the master's use. That really is the theme of this message. And so Paul uses the illustration of vessels or containers in a large house. Now, in our homes, we have many containers. I'm sure you have containers of many sizes, many colors, Many compositions, you have clay, you have ceramic, you have plastic, wood, and uh, perhaps who knows what not. And all of these vessels or containers do have a purpose. You don't buy containers, you don't buy vessels, and you don't say, I really don't need this, but I just bought it anyway. Most often when we buy vessels or when we receive vessels and we are appreciative of what we have received, it is because we need them and we see a purpose for them. So I want to use Paul's discussion or this image that he talks about on the mega house, the large house, and the vessels that he's talking about and share with you three observations that are very true in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the purpose of this image or this picture is to encourage us to be fit for the master's use. Now if I were to come up to any one of you and say, would you like to be used by God? The obvious answer is yes, I want to be used by God more. Now in this illustration, the Apostle Paul is reminding Timothy, here are some things you must do so that you can stay usable. It's one thing to be used by God, but it's another thing to stay usable. So here are my three observations for today, based on Paul's discussion on vessels or containers. The first one is vessels are made for a purpose, and I did share that already. You think about your house, you think about the church. In fact, today, when we go and um, join the rest of the congregation for our fellowship, you will see lots of containers, you will see lots of vessels there. And all these vessels do have a purpose. They hold something. Vessels are containers or they are receptacles. And if you go back to the Bible, you will see that God's people are referred to as vessels and our lives are vessels and the purpose is not to be empty and if you think about it any vessel that you have either in your home or if you drop by at the fellowship hall a little later you will see these vessels contain something and for whatever item that is contained in the vessel the vessel is a dwelling place so let's say you've stored cereal in a container. That container is a dwelling place, not a permanent dwelling place until you finish your cereal off, of course, but it is a dwelling place for that cereal. Or if you take water, if you take oil, if you take vinegar, whatever the case may be, when it is contained in the vessel, when it is contained in that article or object, it becomes a dwelling place. 
And that concept of the dwelling place is important to understand what Paul means here when he talks about vessels. Ever since creation, from Genesis chapter 1, God has desired to dwell with his people. Do you remember the Garden of Eden? God was communing with Adam and Eve. And when sin came in, or when sin came into the equation, when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, God had to send them out, for the, send them out from the Garden of Eden. Why? Because God was holy, just as much as God desired fellowship, just as much as God decided to dwell with his creation, where there is sin, God cannot abound. God cannot be there. And so that is why it is called sacred space. God dwelling with us and God dwelling with his creation in a sacred space is a concept that you will find right through the Old Testament. You see it in Genesis and then during the time of the patriarchs, you remember there were altars, there were sacrifices, and those spaces were considered sacred. Why? This is where God dwelt. You remember Moses and the burning bush. When God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, he said, take off your sandals because this is holy ground. This is sacred space. Fast forward to the children of Israel in the tabernacle. Anytime they were, uh, they were approaching the tabernacle, they had to approach with caution. There were rules and regulations and rituals. And that's because they all understood this was God's sacred space. You go forward to the temple. It's the same thing. The temple is where God dwelt. Sacred space. Only the priests were allowed in. Because God was telling the people, yes, I desire dwelling with my creation. I desire being one with my creation and fellowshipping with them. But to come to me, you have to remember I am a holy God. And therefore there are standards. There are preparations that you must engage in before you come into my presence. All of this culminates, all of these changes with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The son of God who came, who paid the price for our sins. And I want to test your Bible knowledge. When our Lord Jesus Christ hung on the cross and he died, something happened in the temple. Do you remember that? Yes. Anna has very good, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Is it, uh, uh, Yes, anyway, good, good body language and action. She did that, which means the temple, a curtain, rent into two. It tore into two. And that was a very powerful symbol reminding us that because of what Jesus Christ did, because of the price our Lord Jesus Christ paid for our sin, that we were now able to go into God's presence, that relationship and fellowship was now established. And as one theologian said, he said, since Pentecost, the temple and tabernacle moved location to human hearts. You know the story. Our Lord Jesus Christ died, rose again, and on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came and descended upon the believers, from that day forth, we all have the privilege of knowing that we are indwelt by God's Holy Spirit. And so today, the sacred space is within us, and we are the vessels. We are God's vessels, and God dwells within us. And God dwells within us, not because of anything that we've done. In fact, that was our opening hymn, that uh, we are where we are, not because who we are, but because of who God is. And because of what God has done, in and through the person of Jesus Christ, God dwells with us and we now have peace with God. The New Testament writers continue to talk about this. You will see many references where they say Christ in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And the Apostle Paul captures it very beautifully in the second reading that Anna did for us. 
which is 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Uh, Pastor Roger had uh, all the verses nicely laid out for us. Paul talks about the ministry that we have, and he goes on to explain. But I want to bring you down to verse 7. And that's the one phrase that the Apostle Paul presents very beautifully. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Now, each one of us, if we have come to that personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, if we have invited him as our Lord and Savior at some point in our lives, where we believe that he is the only way to God, we have that treasure within us in earthen clay jars. Now, you might feel like a jar of clay this afternoon. Why? Because of all the struggles you're facing and the challenges you're going. Because a jar of clay is very finite. It is very fragile. And you might be feeling fragile this afternoon. But the word of God reminds us from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 that you and I, as people of God, we are not just jars of clay. We have within us the treasure of God. That is God's presence. And as the treasure living within us, we are people of strength, we are people of courage, and we are people who can face the unknown. Not because we feel fragile, but because the treasure, God's presence within us, God is dwelling within us in our sacred space, and he is able to give us the strength to move on. My second observation from Paul's reference to the vessels is that vessels bring forth only what is within them. Vessels bring forth or they pour out what they contain. So when you go to the fellowship hall, be mindful. I saw that Ranjani was making some good coffee. And let's say you have the percolator and you, op you open the tap or the, the thing to let the coffee out, what do you expect to come out? Coffee, because that's what's inside. The percolator is just bringing out what's inside. I see there are some orange juice as well. Pastors get to do a sneak peek at the fellowship hall before we come into church. But let's say there is a container, a covered container, and it says orange juice. You pour and you expect it to be orange juice. What comes out is basically what's inside and so the second point that i want to share with you is that what comes out of us is what is inside remember there is god in us and so god needs to come out in all our interactions but sometimes it is possible that one what comes out is tainted with something that should not be there so let me give you an illustration. This is not something that will happen in the fellowship hall. This is not something that I don't think has happened at the Fairview Church of God. Let's say you have a nice covered uh, container that says orange juice. And you pour orange juice. It comes out looking uh, like orange juice and you taste it. And uh, it has a very uh, unusual odor. It's like tainted. It doesn't sound orangey at all. It has a mix of all kinds of things. And uh, somebody looking at your face as you taste it knows that something is not right. So it's orange juice, but it's been tainted with something else. Some of us probably remember when plastic first came out. Some of you may remember we were given plastic lunch boxes to take to school. Do you remember that era? And yes, and when you got to school and there was a rubber band that mothers put around the lunch box just to make sure it didn't open up. When you got to school and when you opened out, you were not sure because of the smell of the plastic, whether you were eating food or whether you were eating plastic. And the point I want to, of course, now plastic has been refined. It's a fine art and you have all these odorless plastic and things like that. But the point I want to make is that sometimes what is within is the genuine product. But when it comes out, it gets tainted because of all that is part of the system. And so even in our lives, we are called to be treasures in earthen or clay jar vessels. We are called to be people of hope. 
we are called to reflect the hope that is in Jesus Christ, which is why the Apostle Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. But sometimes, because of what happens to us, because of all the fragile situations that we face, because of all the challenges that we encounter, some of these experiences come out in our conversations with people. And people sometimes have a hard time figuring out whether we are projecting Christ or whether we are projecting the pains and the confusion, the pain and the confusions that we have been experiencing. So Paul is reminding us that as a vessel, that we need to be fit for the master's use. That really is the overarching theme here. And he says we need to be fit for the master's use. And he reminds us uh, in these verses. So uh, the vessels bring forth or pour out what is in there. The third thing that I want to share with you is that if vessels are to be usable, they have to be cleaned constantly. And sometimes there is some decluttering that needs to take place. So... We all know that any vessel that has to be used again has to be cleaned. Let's say you have a very expensive vessel. You have a very expensive uh, set of china or any other, uh, any other thing in your home and you entertain some guests. And uh, you have a wonderful evening. You have dinner. And then you have to do what you have to engage in washing the dishes. You have to clean them if you want to use them again. Imagine a guest comes to your place three days later and you serve them. I mean, this is rude to even mention this as an illustration. You would never offer food to the guest in that same container that has not been washed. Why? Because constant and continued cleaning and washing is required if the vessel is to stay usable. And that's very true in our Christian lives as well. We love to be used by God, but it is important to remember that yes, God wants to use us, but sometimes we don't stay usable. And how do we not stay usable? Because we've allowed some stains, we've allowed some things from the past, from our past seasons, from past chapters, we allow them to carry over. And as a result, there's no cleansing, there's no cleaning that takes place. And so we are not fit for the master's use. So the encouragement or the invitation is to constantly and continuously submit ourselves to the cleansing work of the Holy Spirit who removes, who cleans, who is able to prepare us for the next season of life with God. Now what has to be cleansed is something that has to be removed. But there is also what we call spiritual declutter as vessels. Let me give you an illustration from our home. Now Angela has set up just within the door or just as you enter, there is a plastic container I might get into trouble for this, but uh, I will see. Please pray for me. But Angela has set up a container uh, just for those things that are important when you're going out. Gloves, keys, those kinds of things. But you know the three men in the house over a period of time, they will place all kinds of things. You have wallets, belts, you have all kinds of keys that shouldn't be there. And mind you, these are not bad things. These are not evil things. These are not things that uh, are ungodly. These are nice, decent things that we use, but we just put it there. And ever so often, Angela sits down, and what does she do? She declutters. Now, none of these things that she had to remove were bad things. And even in our lives, as vessels, just like that vessel by our door, there is a periodic decluttering that needs to take place. And you know, sometimes when you talk to people, you realize you become a very worthwhile receptacle for all their problems, all their challenges. And when you interact with people in your workplace, they have mindsets, they have attitudes, they have worldviews that are not necessarily godly. They fit very well with the world. 
And so they share these worldviews with you. And what happens is that these worldviews, these thoughts, these mindsets, they stay within your inner being. So these are not necessarily sinful, but they don't align with what God has in store for you. They don't align with what God wants for you to do as you walk with him. And that is why now and then it's good to sit down and engage in what we call decluttering, spiritual decluttering. Remember in our box, those things were good things, but just that they did not belong there. And even in our lives, there are things that the spirit of God will show us saying these are good things you're having. But for this season I'm leading you through, I don't want you to hold on to that. I want you to let it go. Because what I'm doing with you now, says God the Holy Spirit, is a deep and a different work. And you need to let go. You need to engage in spiritual decluttering so that I can keep the essential, says God, and work with you and move you to the next season. So even as we reflect on these three observations, May we remind ourselves that the Apostle Paul, writing under divine inspiration, is encouraging Timothy and is encouraging all of us to be fit for the master's use. And I'm sure we all want to be fit for the master's use. We all want to be used by God. But we have to stay usable. And if we are to stay usable, then we need to submit ourselves to the cleansing work of God the Holy Spirit. May God bless the reflection of his word this afternoon.